Hi everyone. Today is going to be your first lecture of the first week for this semester. The topic is crystallography part one. I recommend you to read more in chapter four from Ashcroft and Mernin book. Let's I read out all the topics that we're going to cover this week. First, lattices with a basis. Second, Brave lattice and primitive vectors. Third, simple body center and face center cubic lattices. Fourth, primitive unit cell, weaknesses cell, and conventional cell. At the end of the week, I will show you some common crystal structures, including hexagonal close pack, diamond, singlet, sodium chloride, cesium chloride. Why we have to learn about crystal structure? You might wonder, right? In many aspects of research related to materials, knowing crystal structures is very really important to understand more advanced characterization and analysis. For example, from crystal structure of a material to its density, or even to its powder X-ray diffraction. So at the end, you will see that you will be able to calculate the theoretical density for each crystal structure. And it will like to predict or calculate the powder X-ray diffraction intensities for the simple cases. Solids generally appear in three forms, right? We already know a uh, solid that is dimensionally stable and it has a volume of its own. But here we will classify the solid by the atomic arrangement. So I said three forms. Let's take a look. The first one is crystalline. Crystalline solid is a solid material whose uh, constitutes are arranged in highly ordered microscopic structure, forming a crystal lattice that extends in all directions. If you take a look at all these circles, orange circles here, they all right, sit very nicely, patterning very nicely with the repetitive pattern very nice. The second form is called polycrystalline. Oh, look at this. So I see something that packed very nice, but it got a break here. So let's, I said, okay, this is region one. Maybe I will show you um, with the drawing. So I said, this is this area, right? Is my region one. And another one here is region two, and it got a break here. So we call this as grain. Okay, let's call grain number one. And Grain number two. You will see that for each grain here, it has different orientation, right? And also, not only that, it has different size as well. So grain one and grain two are not the same size, right? So this is called poly crystalline. The uh, crystalline, like you can think of like multiple single crystal regions, as I already say, each one, each region is called a grain and separated by the grain boundary. I make maybe another color here. So this is right here, somewhere here, we call
explain boundary. Okay. The third one, third form is called amorphous. You will see that uh, the arrangement of each atom, right, is all random. Or, or you can think like either random, no pattern at all, or maybe like only a short range, like a few, few bond lengths of like atomics. So that is like called glass like, right? So normally it's just like lack of long range order. So we call it amorphous. So these two we call it crystal. And this one non crystal. And for glass. You will see a few range of order. So just few bonds, right? And some like it's just amorphous alone, right? It's like the order is all random or no pattern at all, right? It's just all random, okay? Another example of it is like plastic and gel. Like some, some gel could be like amorphous and some Specific gel could be like a little bit of like a few bond lengths of order, but but only um little bit, and it doesn't fall to be like a crystalline because crystalline is like long order, long range of order. I'll show you more examples here. For crystalline, this is quartz, silicon dioxide. The red dot is silicon, oxygen dot is a uh, blue dot here. You will see very nice patterning here. And example of polycrystalline is polycrystalline silicon. This material they use a lot to make the um, solar cell panel. As you can see here, this is like four bonds, right? Uh, with the silicon. You will see the grain boundary here and here, a little bit here and here, right, to break um, each region with what do you see? Different orientations and different size. An example of amorphous or glass-like, right? Silicon dioxide. You will see that like um, some area, right? Some area is patterning so well that looks like this, look like quartz, but not enough, right? Not enough. So this is like uh, silicon dioxide in the form of amorphous or glass.
Okay. Here I want you to see all these pictures. Nature likes to have symmetry and order, right? You will see the seeds in the sunflower, the the honeycomb here is patterning nicely. Or even the, let's I make a drawing. It packs so well. Do you see that, that this patterning is packed all around, right? And um, nature has been thinking about order, order and symmetry for a long time. The same as human, right? Same as human. When we see something like look like very nice pattern, I mean, it's really like good for your eyes, right? I mean, it's so beautiful. Here you can see patterning of the silk or even like the uh, drawing or even the painting of like famous painters. For example, here I got it from a famous painter named Escher. It's like a patterning of the duck. Okay, good. So now let's um, see the definition of lattice and basis. Okay. What is the word lattice means? What does that mean? Let's get to know this word, lattice. A lattice is a 2D or 3D, right? In this case, you see like 2D, periodic array of points to which a, a repetitive pattern of atoms is attached. Atoms in a crystal are generally pictured as being arranged on an imaginary lattice. And let's move to basis. What is the meaning of basis? Basis could be individual atoms, right? Or even groups of atoms. So these are referred to as the basis of the lattice. Imagine like you have nails on the wall, right? Making the decoration on the wall. And this is your decoration composed of maybe a flower with a leaf, let's say like that, okay? And then you put the leaf hang here. So let's see if I can make more or less the same color. So I have here, right? and hang it here. Another one, and hang it here. And another one, and hang the leaf and the flower, and so on, okay? And this lattice combined with basis leads to crystal structure. Let's I read this out. In geometry and crystallography, a brave lattice is an infinite array of discrete points generated by a set of discrete translation operation. You might think of like um, 
some operation that is called translation operation. And this name, Brave, is from the uh, guy named August, Auguste Brave. So this is a French name, a French physicist name. Um, the reason we don't pronounce S here because it's, it's, it's just French, okay? So Brave, okay, not Brave S. Okay, point space is the set considering of elements that are points. It's a model used to describe objects without specifying exact nature of what we represent by points. And uh, we will use vectors a lot um, for this lecture. So that's why I asked you to review vector algebra. I hope you did so. How about what's the meaning of ideal crystal? It's an infinite repetition of identical groups of atoms. So like in real, I mean, there will be like no ideal crystal, right? Because it has to be like infinite. But I mean, in some approximation, we can consider, okay, could be considered as ideal crystal. And again, I will uh, read this out, but you already know the meaning of lattices. Right? Some people might think, okay, it's just mathematical points to which the repetitive pattern of atoms is attached. So it could be like 3D, normally we call lattice, or it could be a net like 2D. An example of a net of lattices. So this is magnetic cobalt nanoparticle. And you will see it like uh, organized, it serves so well. The black dots here, right? is the magnetic cobalt nanoparticle. And if you zoom in, you will see the lattice plane. Can you guys guess what technique we use? to magnify like this much. Transmission microscope, right? TM, transmission electron microscope. You can see the uh, lattice plane so clear for each nanoparticle. So from some approximation, like I said, right? I mean, nothing is infinite, but for some approximation, you can think like, okay, if I consider only a few region um, compared to the whole sample, it could be like infinite, okay? Let's see the meaning of Brave lattice. We have two definitions, okay? Definition one, a Breve lattice is an infinite array of discrete point with an arrangement, an orientation, let's see. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> a Brave lattice is an infinite array of discrete points with an arrangement and orientation that appears exactly the same from any point in the array. So take a look at all these dots here. Let's sit on point P. I'm gonna make a drawing, just hang in there. Okay, 
So let's sit on point P here, right? You look to your right. You see this guy. Okay. Okay, we said, okay, let's move to sit Q. And you look through the same to the right. You see this guy. And how about let's look to the left. You see this guy, right? Same distance with this situation. Now look above. Look above. Diagonal this way, you see this guy and you see this guy, right? Look below. Let's make this color. Look below. You see this guy and you see this guy. And let's look diagonal this way. See the same thing. Even this way, right? See the same. Same thing. And even <clears throat> go this direction, right? You see this guy, you see this guy. Look here, see this guy. Look here, you see this guy. So everywhere, right? Everywhere around you, everywhere around you, no matter you sit on either P spot or Q spot, you see the same environment or the same from any point in array. Okay, so this is definition one. So here, <clears throat> we will take a look at definition two. Definition two. A Brava 3D lattice is the subset of point space consisting of all points with position vectors given by this equation. I'm going to put a symbol as a vector. A vector is written as n1, a1, n2, a2, n3, a3, where a1, a2, and a3 are three vectors not all in the same plane, and n1, n2, n3 are integral numbers. We call these vectors a1, a2, and a3 as primitive vectors, and they are said to generate the lattice. What does that mean? Generate the lattice. Let's take a look at this. So we have a1 vector, right? So this 2D, so we don't have A3. And A2 primitive vector, another one, and both of them are not in the same plane, okay? How do they say generate the lattice? Imagine it's like you stamp, right? So you move this. So this is A1, right? This is A2. So you move this guy, right? To here. So let's, I make a little bit better drawing. Okay, more straight line. Okay, so move here to here and to here. And then move up.
Notice that the word generate the lattice that light, it hit all the lattice, right? It hit all the lattice. No, no void or no nothing, right? That missing. They said, write down position of P, Q, S, and R in terms of primitive vectors. I will give you a little bit of time. You can pause this video right now and try to write down the position of point P, Q, S, and R in terms of primitive vector. Let's I give you an example. Q. What Q should be? Minus, right? A two. Uh, how about give you another one R right here, right? Remember when you uh, want to draw the vector, draw directly from the origin. So this is vector R. So R is going to be Go to the right, right? Two times A1 down, right? Minus A2, okay? Can you do the rest by yourself? So that should be easy, right? Here's the solutions. P is minus A1 plus 2A2, two two, right? If you want to make a vector, it's just like that, okay? And how about we already have done Q and R. How about S? S here, right? 1A1 one and 2A2. Two two. It's similar to the um, vector positions in Cartesian coordinate, right? X, Y, Z or something like that, or for the plane is like just X, Y plane, okay? So that should be easy now. Okay, great. So now we move to 3D, okay? 3D lattice. The easiest one is simple cubic. The Abbreviation is just SC, simple cubic lattice with primitive vector A1, A2, and A3. Cubic, the size like the same, right? The width, the length, the height, same as A. You can have a box, right, in front of you and imagine that um, an atom is sitting on eight corners. Each of the corner, right, is an atom. Nothing in the middle of the cube and nothing is on the face. Six faces, nothing. So I ask, are definition one and two of Bravo lattice satisfied? 
what is that definition one again? Guys, remember definition one? Definition one. Okay, let's I see it at this corner, right? If you sit on this corner, you look up, you see this guy, right? You see this guy. In front of you, you see this guy and you see this guy. Okay. So now, let's I move to sit here, okay? I said, okay, I look up, I see this guy, oh, the same. Look down, I see this guy is same as this. Look behind i see this all oh, the same as this look in front right see something here right in front is the same as this now to the right right to the right see this guy to the left this guy the same to the right see this all oh, the same as this and to the left, you see this everywhere you look. So as I pick, I pick all the atoms that are the closest distance from this or this. Okay, but you can also like look in a diagonal way as well. You see that no matter where you sit, you see exact the same environment. So that satisfied with the definition one. How about definition two? Remember this equation? Can you write down some of the location? Write out in terms of this equation. So let's do one example together. So if I said this is an origin, okay, it's zero, zero, zero. And I said, okay, please specify this location. Okay, let's make it location A. So we say A will be written as a1 plus A2 plus A3. Okay, how about somewhere here? Let's make position B. Okay, can you tell me? Nothing in A direction, right? And nothing in A1 and A2. So only A3. Okay, the rest, right? You can try by yourself. It's just like um, position vectors in Cartesian coordination. Okay, so that should be easy. How about to the honeycomb? Honeycomb lattice A and B are equivalent, but C is not. Okay, why is it that? Let's take a look. That satisfied definition one and two. Let's say definition one. Definition one. Let's sit on A first, right? Look to the right, and then you sit on C. Look to the right with the same distance. Oh no, you see nothing. Now, look a bit up, but this way. How about if I sit on C? a bit up on this way. See something? No, nothing again. Right? Okay, let's try to change. 
another direction this you see this guy right see something you see an atom here okay the same direction oh no see nothing again is that satisfied the definition one the answer is what no right yes no how about uh definition two definition two you have to set up okay let's make this is a one and this is a two so we said let's assume this is my um expected the um, primitive vectors and if I said, okay, let's move this. No, nothing, right? So do you see that it didn't generate uh, the lactase, right? Because it's missing, missing this and this, right? So no atoms here, no atom here. Okay. So definition two, there are no primitive vectors. So the one that I assume now, nah, it doesn't work, right? That can span the lattice, okay? So neither of them. How about pentagon, a pentagon on net? Okay. You can read this out by yourself. This is just the definition of pentagonal lattice it has a five-fold rotational symmetry. So we're not going to talk about that now. Okay, but um, if you think like to combine the pentagonal and like build the jigsaw, right, or the puzzles, you will see there are some void. Right. So neither of them either, because this pattern leaves voice. You can try by yourself. If you sit here, you see something like that and like this and like that. If you move here, nothing here, right? And nothing like that, right? So everywhere you sit, you will not see the same environment. Okay. Next, the choice. Uh, if the primitive vectors is not unique, okay. So this picture shows that there are more than one primitive vectors. Okay. For example, this set, right. So this set, the first one, is this guy and this guy, A1 and A2. So A1 and A2, is that generate the lattice? Is that generate the lattice? Think by yourself. It is generate the lattice, right? So this set, okay. Now let's do this set. A1 prime. A2 prime. A1 prime. A2 prime. A1 prime, A2 prime, right? Think about like them, right? A1 prime, A2 prime. Okay, so now move up. A1 prime, A2 
A2 prime, A1 prime, A2 prime, right? And all that. So this set, right? Primitive vectors of A1 prime, A2 prime, generate all the lattice. How about A1 double prime? A2 double prime. A1 double prime. A2 double prime. And then you move this right to the next. A1 double prime. A2 double prime. Now move again. A1 double prime. A2 double prime. And move the whole thing here, right? So A1 double prime. A2 double prime. A1 double prime. A2 double prime. So see, so it hit all the lattices. So this set, the double prime, is okay. How about a triple prime, right? A one triple prime, a two triple prime. So this one and this one, okay? So the whole thing I move here, right? A1 triple prime, but this one be a little bit here. A2 triple prime. But what's happening? What's happening? It's missing this guy, right? It's missing this guy. So this set, this primitive vector set, the triple prime one, they cannot generate all the lattice, okay? So this is not good to pick a triple prime, okay? So it's not primitive vectors, okay? So a one triple prime, and A2 triple prime are not primitive vectors because they not generate the lattices, okay? Next, we move to BCC. Body center cubic lattice. Are definition one and two of Bravel lattice satisfied? Definition one, remember, move everywhere. And if you see the same environment, that means you are satisfied with the definition of Bravais lattice. So let's sit here in the middle of the cube. You see this guy, right? On the top, another one at the bottom. And then from diagonal, you see, right? This eight, each atom at eight corners. I will recommend you maybe like, um, since I didn't have the models with me and right now it's hard to get in 
my office because like with the regulation right now, um, it, it's just hard to uh, get into La Long Tong University right now. But I recommend you that like grab a box, okay? And then imagine that you are in the middle of the box, okay? And you will see at the corner, right? They have eight corners, okay? And then imagine you have another box, right? The second box and penetrate half of it, okay? You will see something like this. And wherever you sit, you will see the same environment. So that's satisfied with definition one. Or even two, we can try to write each position with the position vectors, and you will see that is uh, satisfied with the definition two of forever lattice. Um, but before we do that, right, remember that equation, it has the primitive vector. So what is the primitive vector of B, C, C? Body cubic center, body center cubic. So it's not simple cubic anymore, right? So you need another vector point from the origin, right? To the middle, okay? Now, can you write A1, A2, and A3 for me if the length of the cube, right? The width, the length, and the height, they are the same A, okay? I give you a minute or you can pause this video and try to do by yourself. Okay. Ready? Let's see the answer. This is A1, right? It's the length A, X hat, and A2, A, and Y hat, and A3. So this is the one that like point to the middle. Okay, so if you move this, three sticks, imagine it's like a stick, right? And then you move from here to here, right? And then it will hit the same. So let's see if I can draw a picture for you. So I meant that move this guy, this guy, and this guy, like I said, right? It would be like, This like that. And this one is another one on top, right? Another one on top. So it's going to be hit the second, the atom at the middle, right, of the second box that sit on top of this. And then you move around and around and around, right? I mean, you will see that you hit all the atoms, okay? So this is primitive vectors of the BCC. Oh, we have more, right? Remember I said primitive vectors are not unique. That means we can have more than one set, okay? So this is the second set of primitive vectors for BCC lattice. 
So from here, let's take a look. It's pointing out, right? Everywhere is point is pointing out to uh other boxes. So let's see this. So if you see, for example, A3, okay, I will give you this one. A3, again, I recommend you to have a box with you, okay? You might listen to this video clip again and again and again, but that will be good, okay? The first time, maybe you might not have a box with you, but uh, later on, maybe the second time, or you can pause this video and then go and get a box with you and then sit. And you can draw, okay, this is X axis and Y axis, right? Put the box like this, and this is C axis. Okay, where is that A3? A3 is one half of a, right, the position is one half, but look at this, x hat plus y hat, right? So x and y need to be what? Need to be positive, right? Positive, that means it's somewhere inside, right? I mean, inside of this area. But Z, so this is A3, right? But Z is like with negative, right? So it's gonna be minus here, okay? So not only have a box, you can imagine by um, maybe grab three pencils, with different colors or three pens with different color and point to A3, right? And then if you get that, another pen point to A1 and A2, okay? You will see like this picture. Okay, I recommend you to do that. Too bad that like um, we cannot see um, the models that I have in my office, but if you do like I recommend, you will see how the vector A1, A2, and A3, especially do A3 first, okay? Because that's what I explained to you. And look at this. So how, how do we remember this? So we'll have minus C here, Right, another one, move to minus y hat and minus x. So a1 is minus x hat and the rest is plus, plus, plus. And the prefix is one half. a2 is the same move minus here. a3 the same move minus here. And when it's all plus, right? That means that area is in the um, positive coordination. Okay. How about FCC? FCC is just simple cubic plus this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And sit here and nothing in the middle, right? So it's built up like this. So this is face center cubic lattice or FCC. This is easy. How do we write a symmetric primitive vector for FCC? This is it, the answer. It has to hit all the atoms, remember? 
And if you pick the origin here, right, you have one half A, Y hat plus C hat. That means it's right here. Okay, again, like half a box in front of you, right? And you can either draw or maybe like point with your pen or pencil. So this is on what? On Z and Y plane. It's on this space. How about A2? Right here, right? Yes. A2 is one half A X hat plus C hat, and A3 is one half A X hat plus Y hat. Are definitions one and two of Bravo lattice satisfied? Yes. Right. Try to do this by yourself. So remember definition one, you move uh, to each point, right? You look around, up and down, left and right, you see the same thing or not. And definition number two, right? You can write each uh, position, right, with the Vector positions, position vectors according to the equation. And remember the one, the numbers that in front of primitive vectors has to be integral numbers. Okay, great. So this is gonna be the end of the first lecture for today. So this is a summary already. I already said, but I will go briefly with you. Quick, a periodic array of points is called Bravais lattice 3D or Bravais net 2D if definition one and two are satisfied. A set of vectors is always associated associated with any Bravo lattice on it. These vectors are called primitive. They're not unique, are independent of choice of the origin, and they generate a span and infinite lattice. Okay, great. And um, we're not gonna talk much about um, symmetry operation and all that, but uh, next, no, actually next slide, we will come back again to the simplest crystal structures, and then we'll do more about that, like uh, how many nearest neighbors for each crystal structure, okay? We will learn how to count, okay? So I think that's it for uh, today. Thank you for listening. See you next slide. Bye.